All right, so for this lesson, we're going to do something called inequalities. Uh, we've seen these before, so it might be a bit of review for some of you, but that's okay. And we're going to talk about kind of equations uh, and inequalities and how they kind of interact with each other. So to start things off, we're just going to remember some definitions, uh, symbol definitions. So we got a bunch of symbols over here on the left. Um, we'll talk about this one right now. So that's with the arrow opening up to the left. Some of you guys have seen these arrows drawn like this. Uh, with teeth, and they say it's the alligator, and the alligator eats the bigger number. Um, I've seen some people talk about this as Pac-Man. So Pac-Man always eats the bigger number. Hey, um, there's his little eye. Yeah, there's a Pac-Man. It does have, it does mean a word. Okay, so as much as it's true that it eats the bigger number or you point it towards the bigger number, however you want to look at that, that still works. But it's important that you know the proper words and terminology to go with these symbols. This symbol specifically means greater than. So when I use that symbol, I have to use the phrase greater than. When the symbol goes the other direction, like this one right here, I have to use the wording less than. And the rules you learned before about the sign needs the bigger number is true. It's the terminology that people maybe aren't comfortable with. So this one is greater than, this one is less than. If they put a little line underneath it, such as this one, it's greater than because it's got that part of the arrow. The equal sign means, or the line underneath means it's or equal to. So that means it could be greater or it could be the same thing, the same value. Uh, if they do it this way, because they have the less than symbol, so that's less than, and then the line means equal, this would be less than or equal to. And the last one is just an equal sign with a line through it. That means not equal to. All right, let's, let's use some of these symbols so we see what it looks like. We're going to talk about graphing inequality statements. So... First, I'm going to read it, then I'm going to graph it. So if we looked at this first question right here, if I were to read that, that reads as x is less than or equal to 7. That means if you had to choose a value for x, it could be anything it wanted as long as it is less than the number 7 or equal to the number 7. If you look at the one below it, again, I'm just going to stick with the words. This would be the variable x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Again, we don't know what x is, but it has to be something that is greater than or equal to negative 5. So for instance, if we look at this first one, it's easier to talk about positive numbers. So if we look back up at this first one, um, examples of what x could be. x could be the number 6 because 6 is less than or equal to 7. x could be 0. X could be negative 1,000. It could be any of these numbers because all of those numbers follow the rule of less than or equal to 7. Perfect. We're going to graph these. Um, to graph, we need to create a number line. The way that I like to create number lines is whatever number they've given me, so in this case, 7, I'm just going to put it right in the middle. See, so that's the number 7. Awesome. Anything to the left... So anything this direction are numbers that are less than 7. Anything to the right are numbers that are greater than 7. So if we wanted to represent our inequality of x is less than or equal to 7, then what I need to do is figure out that it is this region on my graph. All these spots on the number line are less or equal than 7. 
the way that we represent that it's equal to 7 is by putting a dot at 7. And that dot is shaded in. So we have this. That is me graphing x is less than or equal to 7. We could do the same thing with the second question down there. Uh, so I'm going to put negative 5 right here. All right, I'm put it right in the middle. Anything to the left is less. Anything to the right is greater. We want to graph x is greater than negative 5. So if I'm looking at my graph, that means my graph should go from right here, and I circle it right at 5, and then I do a line like that. And again, I should probably put an arrow on the end because it could be any number that's greater than negative 5. And that's graphing an inequality. It's basically like doing a number line, um, essentially. If we look over to the right, there's a couple questions. You can try them on your own, try to graph them. I also want you to try to write the sentence. So over here, notice how I wrote the sentence, x is less than or equal to 7. I want you to try that for both of these. So if you want to pause the video right now, that's fine. And then uh, unpause and see if you got it right. So I'm going to fill them in right now. Uh, this first one, if I were to read that, it reads as x is greater than or equal to 24. If I was to put this on a number line, I would put a solid dot right at 24. That means I could equal 24. And then I want to draw a line that's greater than. So I could be any number in this direction. That represents x is greater than or equal to 24. The next one, if I was to read that, that reads as x is less than or equal to, because there's that line there, negative 8. If I was to graph it, negative 8 is right there. Equal to means I put a dot right on negative 8. And then I go less, like that. I maybe could draw my arrow further to the left. But that would represent x is less than or equal to negative 8. All right, we'll try a couple more examples. So if we look at um, this one over here on the left, if I was to read that and write it out, that is x is greater than... So if we wanted to graph it, we would do our little line, we would put a 3, and you'll notice the difference on this one versus the other ones is it doesn't have the line underneath the greater than sign. This means that it cannot equal 3. It has to be a number bigger than 3. The way that we represent that is by drawing a dot at 3 but not circling it in. So we draw it like that. That means that I can get really close to 3, but I have to be bigger than 3. It can't actually equal 3. So I put a dot, but I don't fill the circle in. And then I draw my arrow. That represents x is greater than 3. Had I circled it in, that would have been x is greater than or equal to 3. Again, if we look at the one below it, that is x is less than 12, negative 12. So if I'm graphing that, I'm at negative 12. I want to be less than negative 12, but not equal. So I draw a dot at negative 12, but the dot is open. It's a circle like that. And then I draw my arrow to say it's less than. That is graphing the inequality x is less than negative 12. On the right, if you want to try two more, again, you can pause the video and then do it again on your own, see if you got the right answer. I'm going to go through it now. So this would read as x is less than 5. If I wanted to draw that, here is 5, less than 5. 
means I'm any number to the left of five. Like that. The second one below it would be x is greater than negative 16. Again, we don't know what x equals. It could be any number greater than negative 16. And that's what this graph is representing. So if I put negative 16 here, this would be like x could be anything from there, but greater than. It could be any of those values. Awesome. Um, the next two are not equal signs. So this would read as x is not equal to 9. The way we would graph this to say something is not equal, we have to draw a middle spot, say that is 9. And then I'm going to put a dot at 9, but it's going to be open. Because remember, that means not equal to. And in this case, it could be greater than 9 or less than 9. It just can't equal 9. So I do the open circle, and then I actually draw my arrows both directions. So it could be anything greater than 9 or less than 9. It just can't equal 9. Over here, if I was to read this one, that is x is not equal to negative 14. If I was to draw that, there's my negative 14. I do an open circle because it does not equal negative 14. And then I draw arrows in either direction because that shows me that it could be greater than or less than as long as it's not negative 14. Wonderful. That is taking inequalities. So inequalities means it's using one of our signs up here that we talked about. And it's graphing them. Basically, it's just putting them on a number line. We go down here, we could go the other direction. So we could actually graph inequalities that have more than one symbol. If I was to read this, this first one up here, I read it... Um, from left to right, just like a normal sentence. And you can hear people reword this many different ways. I'm just going to do it the, the best way that I can. So I would read this in two segments. The first segment would be the 0 is less than or equal to x. So I'd say 0 is, sorry, it doesn't say equal to, is less than x. Then I'm going to read this again, but I'm going to read this segment of it. So and x is less than 7. Essentially what we're saying when we read that, so 0 is less than x, that's also the same thing as saying x is greater than 0. Those mean the same thing. We're just rewording it. So you can think of it either way. Zero is less than x. X is greater than zero. Mean the same thing. And x could be any number as long as it's less than seven. If we were to graph that, um, that means we have zero. We have seven. And then we have to figure out where we would be allowed to be. We could be anything greater than zero. So I put a little circle there and a line that's greater than zero. Or I could be, sorry, and I have to be less than seven. So I'd put a circle at seven and be less than. Because these two arrows are headed towards each other, right? If you look at this graph, you'll notice that these letters are, these arrows are going to collide. And right? if we imagine they were going towards each other more and more and more, I'm trying to zoom in, it's not letting me in there. We go. If we imagine those arrows are going towards each other, we no longer have to draw the arrows on them. We could just connect this and make it one long line. And that says x could be anything greater than 0 or less than 7. x could be anything in this region. 
It's a little trickier when we have two things, and we actually do see this a lot. So moving forward in grade 10, 11, 12, you will see these signs a lot, and you'll see these situations where uh, X could be greater than something or less than something, and you have to know what that means. So if you look at B, if I was to read this, again, I read it in chunks. So this first part right there, that's saying negative 1 is less than or equal to x. So graphically, that means we have negative 1, and that number is equal to or less than x, meaning that x must be bigger than that. We then do the second chunk. So and x is less than or equal to 4. or equal to 4. So if we were to graph that part of it, we have 4 out here. x has to be less than that, or equal to. So I'm going to draw a dot right there, and I'm going to go less than 4. And again, we have this situation where we have two lines. Oh, boy. We have this situation where we have two arrows that are headed towards each other. So what we can just do is connect those two arrows all the way across. right? And you don't actually have to draw the arrows anymore. This graph represents that x is greater than negative 1, or negative 1 is less than x, and that x is less than 4. Awesome. There's two more. If you want to try to graph them, go ahead. Um, I'm going to write out the, the saying as well. So if you want to try to write the sentence, that's cool. And then try graphing it. This first one, if you're reading it in chunks right here, that's negative 5 is less than x. And the second chunk over here, oh, I did too far. X is less than or equal to 3. So it looks like that. If we were to graph this, this means that we have negative 5. We have 3. X could be greater than negative 5, but it cannot equal negative 5. So I have an open circle and then like that. And then I have X is equal to 3. So I put a dot at 3 and then I do less. So I'm going that way. And again, you'll notice those lines actually connect. So I don't have to draw arrows on them. I can just connect them. The last one, if you were to read that, it reads as negative 14 is less than or equal to x and x is less than negative 6. Notice that x is not allowed to equal negative 6. If we were putting these on a number line, negative 14 is over here, negative 6 is over here. I need to be less than or equal to negative 14. Sorry, I need negative 14 to be less than or equal to x. So that represents equal because it's a circled in dot. x is bigger than that, so I go to the right. Negative 6, I need to be less than but not equal to, so I do an open circle. And then I go to the left because I'm being less than. This represents that x is less than negative 6, but it's greater than or equal to negative 14. Like that. Awesome. We can also take graphs and turn them into inequalities. So if you look at this right here, for instance, um, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the middle, and the symbol. 
Okay, if I look at that thing right now, it's an open circle. That means it's not equal to. Okay, I, I cannot equal seven. The next thing I'm going to look to see is which way the arrow is going on my graph. In this case, it is going to the left. That means that I am allowed to be anything that is less than 7. The way we represent that is we say x is less than 7. Like that. If you look at the one below, the difference is when you look at the circle, it's now filled in. So that means I can equal negative 4. The arrow goes left. This means I can be less than negative 4. So I could have a value, x, as long as it is less than or equal to negative 4. If you go over here, there's two more. Um, this one, if you look at it, it could equal. And it went to the right, so it's greater. That means I have x is greater than or equal to 9. The last one down there, if I look at this, I cannot equal but I still want to be greater than negative 6. So that means x is greater than negative 6. Cool. So looking at those four, um, <laughs> you, you can write things in other ways. So for instance, if I look at all of these inequalities, x is less than 7 is the same thing as saying 7 is greater than x. Right? Those mean the same thing uh, because the arrow is still biting, if we think of it that way, it's still going at 7. Right? It's still going to eat 7. On this side, it's still going to eat 7. So they mean the same thing um, even though they're, they look almost completely different. That means down here, I could actually say, all right, instead of saying x is less than or equal to negative 4, I could say negative 4 must be greater than or equal to x. It means the same thing. Over here, this means I could rewrite this as 9 is less than or equal to x. I could rewrite this one as negative 6 is less than x. And those all mean the same thing. As long as the arrow is still opening or closing the right way. Perfect. We're going to check out some word problems, so see how this could actually work. Uh, it says, define a variable and write an equation to model each situation. So if you look at A, we have a coffee maker can hold no more than 12 cups of water. Okay. No more than 12 cups of water. But it could hold 12 cups of water. So I would represent that as X has to be less than or equal to 12 cups of water. Right? And that makes sense. Like if we pretended that X was the amount of water in my coffee maker, it could be any value as long as it's less than or equal to 12. Because the question told us no more than 12 cups of water. Now there is the catch to this. So if we look at this question and we think about it a little bit further, um, currently what I'm saying is that x could be any number less than or equal to 12, and that includes negative numbers. I couldn't have a coffee maker with negative 5 cups of water. That doesn't make sense. So we actually do have to put a bottom restriction, and that bottom restriction has to say that x is greater than or equal to no cups of water, which is 0. That represents that x could be greater than 0 or equal to 0, and it also has to be less than or equal to 12. Pictorially, if we graph that, uh, it would look like this. I have zero cups of water. I have 12 cups of water. It could equal either of those. And it could be anywhere in between. Like that. 
Uh, B, you must be at least 15 years old to drive in Nunavut. Um, at least 15 years old, right? That means if you're 15 years old, you could drive. So if we wanted to represent that, we would say X is the age you must be to drive. You have to be greater than or equal to 15. In this case, there is no other limit because technically you could be as old as you want and drive a car. Now, realistically, um, you wouldn't be able to be like a thousand years old and drive a car, but there's no technical limit on the oldest age that you could be. It's just we know that as humans, we don't grow that old. But we can't really put a restriction in there because we don't know the upper restriction. So to draw this, I put a dot at 15. And I'd say it could be anything greater than 15. And it could go all the way up into infinity if we wanted. We just know it's not realistic that someone could be driving that old. They probably shouldn't be driving once they're after a certain age. Just ask my grandma. All right. C. The shoe store sells sizes no larger than 13. No larger than size 13. So they sell size 13, but they don't sell a size 14. They don't sell a size 15, 16, 17, so on and so forth. So to represent this, we're going to say X, which is my shoe size. They only sell things less than or equal to 13. Shoe sizes do have a limit. Uh, you can't have a sh size shoe size of zero. So you have to be greater than zero. And in this case, you would not be greater than or equal to. It would just be greater than because you, there's no such thing as a size zero shoe. I mean, I mean, you don't got feet, I guess. So if we were to put this on our graph, we have size zero. We have size 13. You could be 13. You cannot be zero. And then you're anywhere in between like that. So that graph represents I could be any shoe size greater than zero or less than or equal to 13. Awesome. And D, over 2,500 people participate in a bike-a-thon each year. If we wanted to represent that with math, X will be our people. We just said it's over 2,500. That means it's greater than 2,500. It does not say it's equal to. It says it's over, so it must be greater than 2,500. If we're drawing that, 2,500, we are an open circle because it did not say equal to 25. It said over 25, and we're to the right because we're greater than. Wonderful. If you can do all that, you are an inequality expert.